Follow me, traveler. Let us get to know one another better. After setting foot upon demonic realms, slaying the mighty Lich King and delivering the world from near annihilation, it seems that the battle-hardened citizens of Azeroth are finally due for a bit of a breather. Mists of Pandaria, the latest addition to World of Warcraft's expanding mythology, changes up the pace of legend building with an expansion focused on the curiosity surrounding the elusive Pandaren. Charging forth into the game's fourth expansion with the lighter, brighter side of Azeroth, Pandaria certifiably takes the attention away from the gloom and doom of a world in strife. But has it also taken away the series' edge along with it? We've been flying in this mist for hours, General. The crew grows uneasy. General, you and your best veterans will pave our way. Storm the shore and paint this new continent red! The swirling mists that have long shrouded the mysterious continent of Pandaria have parted, revealing the ancestral homeland of the fabled Brewmasters, and with it, a new zone comprising the new level 85 to 90 journey. Stir-crazy players sitting on a squadron of level-capped alts will be happy to know that the expansion doubles back from Cataclysm's holistic housekeeping. Pandaria focuses almost entirely on the high-level experience, leaving freshly minted characters, including the new Monk class, to feed on the fumes left by Deathwing's Wake. To this end, Pandaria grants passage to seven new areas whose lengthy trails and sprawling hillsides must first be customarily traveled by foot before taking to the skies at 90. It's easy to see why, as the game makes a concerted effort in drawing the player's attention to a thoughtfully paved leveling experience. Pandaria springs to life with an exuberant world building that hasn't been seen since disembarking upon the frozen shores of Northrend. Thoughtful use of phasing and cutscenes drives a central narrative of the land that progresses as you do, and quests, while sometimes a stodgy reminder of the series' time-worn ways, carry a few unexpected surprises too. One notable example utilizes a new flashback mechanic to deliver a sly tip of the hat to the classic film Rashomon. With nobody to watch over our prisoner, I had to make sure he was incapable of escaping. And though this expansion doesn't bring any additions to the core leveling experience, as substantial as those introduced in Cataclysm, the newfound ability to roll a paunchy Pandaren brings a striking new dynamic to Azeroth's racial roster. For the first time ever, players are given a choice of which faction to join from a single race. As a result, the Horde and Alliance have seen a glut of monks filling their ranks. Though not limited to the Pandaren race, the class's kung fu stylings were certainly conceived with the portly pugilists in mind. Tell me of your travels. Monks can hold any role in the rigid trinity of MMOs, and more effectively than they have any right to to hear some players tell it. Depending on their particular spec, monks make use of energy or mana to power their attacks, as well as the class-specific resource, Chi. Death Knight and Paladin players will be in familiar territory. You use attacks fueled by the more conventional resource to build up Chi, which powers the monk's signature abilities. But it's the class's peculiar methods of mobility that most profoundly distinguish it. By using powers like Roll and Flying Serpent Kick, monks seem to flit around the battlefield with a level of alacrity that even blinking mages will envy. The specific properties of those powers are mutable depending on what talents and glyphs you choose. And like Blink, they're unburdened by targeting requirements. It's an interesting design choice that fits right in with WoW's evolving mechanics as a whole. In almost every way, Mists of Pandaria seizes the opportunity to reevaluate long-held conventions. With tons of drastic changes to the fundamental workings of each class, particularly in the new streamlined talent system, even players still clad in their Tier 13 armor sets will find a game much changed. Those returning after a more extended hiatus can expect to spend some time figuring out what skills have changed, which have remained the same, and which have outright disappeared. Altogether, new players will come into a much more intuitive Azeroth. Chugga 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 choo choo! Regardless, it's clear that Mists of Pandaria only spends a portion of its energy mending the past. The array of meaningful new systems and endgame additions it brings dwarf that of every other expansion. The unabashedly inspired pet battles offer a surprisingly deep side game outside of routine PvE and PvP endeavors, while new rep grinds such as the Lore Walkers and Tillers experiment with mixed success in integrating pseudo-persistent land development and backstory building. Patience. Patience. Pandaria offers nine new dungeons to clear, as well as three high-end raids to be slowly rolled out in the initial weeks of its launch. The PvP game, on the other hand, seems to be much less of a focus this time around. Two new battleground maps, which draw on Murder Ball and Payload-inspired rule sets, comprise most of the activity here, with the recent addition of Cross-Realm Zones jumpstarting intermittent pockets of world PvP. Arena, as well as the previously announced Dota-style battleground Ashara Crater, have yet to come into the picture. 
It's always a chancy thing to comment on a game's overall state of balance, much less that of a continually evolving MMO. One thing is certain with the changes that Mist of Pandaria has brought to the table. The game has never been so drastically different. For a lot of players that have stuck around since the very beginning, some of the expansion's biggest switch-ups could pass for borderline heresy. Paladins have lost their auras, hunters their minimum shooting range, and shamans a good majority of their trademark totems. Long-standing resources like mana have become normalized across the board, and the reworked talent system is sure to confound veterans even further by abstracting the three class specialization trees into simplified shadows of their former selves. After taking a moment to regain your composure, however, the changes aren't quite as crazy as they seem. Talent trees as we've known them have gotten to be bloated, and the recent implementation of specs works entirely in service of a trimmer, more focused approach to tackling roles. Even with less to dump points into, the new talent system affords a good level of variance when it comes to decking out your ideal build. And combined with the broad tweaks to skill-altering glyphs, Blizzard's finally starting to make good on its goal of letting players choose preference over perfection. Though it seems as if all these radical changes have resulted in a much simpler game to play overall, the reality couldn't be farther from the truth. The current ease of heroics is a misleading barometer for the harrowing PvE endgame lying underneath. Even the most determined guilds have made slow progress with the game's sole raid available thus far, and the new challenge mode seems to be holding up its end of the bargain as well. With a feature that automatically scales gear to an appropriate level, ensuring that the human element is the determining factor for these grueling gauntlets. <laughs> The end result is a much more striated system of difficulties that gives players the mobility to pursue their intended paths. Heroics make it easy to get geared up for raids, while challenge modes, with their emphasis on small-scale coordination and normalized environments, take gear and large guilds out of the equation. World of Warcraft is a simpler and smoother game than it's ever been in the past, and it's also become evident that it's gotten close, if not already surpassed, all that it's capable of doing with its familiar framework. We readily laud what this expansion's done to bring the bar of the series higher than ever, but we also have to wonder what other surprises, if any, lie beyond the Misty Veil. Rendezvous back here when you're done. You might disregard these kung fu pandas for their fluffy appearances and smarmy demeanors, but it's clear that the land they come from channels an authentic beauty. With hints of Thailand, splashes of Japan, and more than a few passing references to the extravagance of Imperial China, Pandaria conjures a dreamlike composite of Asia refracted through the Blizzard art team's signature pastels and bulbous geometry. From its rolling hillsides and verdant bamboo canopies to its majestic shrines and pagodas, the game pulls together an awe-inspiring tribute to the East with a resounding reverence to the cultures that inspire it. The only thing that just might outshine it is the music, which features some of the most stirring compositions from Blizzard yet. A Chinese violin's rousing cries are sure to leave an indelible mark on your experience through these strange and wondrous lands. What fate did the Emperor foresee? As it turns out, the riotous cycle of upheaval didn't just end with Deathwing's descent upon Azeroth. Mists of Pandaria brings one of the most substantial iterations of World of Warcraft we've seen in quite some time. However, what challenges Pandaria will ultimately face in drawing players have little to do with its whimsical subject matter, and even less with the expansion itself. World of Warcraft is a well-maintained but very old machine, and the decision of whether or not to depart Orgrimmar's salty shores will ultimately fall on something irrational and personal. You won't regret your excursion to these Ursine lands if you've still got the spirit of exploration, the scars, and the fond feelings of battle etched into your heart. Those less into the prospect of jumping into WoW yet again may just as well stay in hibernation. That was all I needed to hear. See this and other GT shows and game reviews on the GT Originals iOS app, available now on the App Store.